Welcome to Beyond the Paper Gown. I'm Dr. Mitzi Crockover. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever found yourself searching for alternatives to traditional pain management for conditions like pelvic pain, such as severe menstrual cramps, pain from endometriosis, or chronic abdominal conditions, such as irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease? Maybe you've tried many options without finding relief. Well, you're not alone. And in fact, some women have turned to cannabis for their pain relief. I wanted to learn more and thought you might too. So today we're speaking with Dr. Janester Wilson-King, a board-certified OBGYN and an expert on cannabis use in women's health. She's a leader in the Society of Cannabis Clinicians and serves on the Special Advisory Board for the Association for Cannabis Health Equity and Medicine. Joining her is Lana Last, CEO and founder of Emma, a company creating cannabis-based therapeutics for pelvic pain, as well as symptoms of menopause, among other conditions. Whether you're here out of curiosity, seeking alternatives, or just to learn, I know you'll find this conversation both interesting and useful. I know I did. Please remember, Our podcast provides education and information, but should not be considered medical advice. I encourage you to consult with your healthcare provider to discuss your own personal healthcare needs. I couldn't be more delighted today than to have two powerful women professionals who are going to really, I think, open our eyes to a new area of women's health treatment that I'm very curious about, and I'm sure you will be as well. So I'm going to let them go ahead and introduce themselves, and then we'll get into a really great conversation. So Dr. Wilson King, please uh, introduce yourself. Sure. Glad to. First of all, I'm honored to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm a board-certified OBGYN who had a conventional OBGYN practice for many, many, many years. Don't want to necessarily tell you how many, because then you'll know that I'm almost an antique. But (laughs) uh, it's been years. And through the years, uh, I actually started doing bioidentical hormone therapy back in the 90s. And through the years, my practice has just transitioned from full service OBGYN to then office GYN and, uh, and surgery, and then come out of the hospital completely and do just office GYN. But then I realized you really can't take care of women and their hormones in a seven to nine minute office visit. So I started a second practice or a second office so to keep it separate for women who women and those assigned female at birth who need hormone therapy and so that's really how my practice transitioned to the integrative gym practice that it is today and what we do essentially is assess where mostly women and those assigned female at birth some men Um, where they are on the health and wellness spectrum, then try to get them where they want to be through nutritional changes, lifestyle modification, whether or not to take supplements, gut microbiome assessments, and hormone balancing and cannabis if needed. So we've got a good tool chest of things to help individualize our treatment plan for our patients. That's terrific. And there's so much there that I would love to spend a couple of hours with you. But because we have limited time, hopefully you'll maybe come back. Um, We're going to focus on the last part of what you said, and that is cannabis, which is a relatively new option that I don't think a lot of us know about. And so, Lana, that's where you come in. Lana Last, who um, is the CEO of Emma. Did I say it right? Yeah, you did. Thanks, Mitzi. Okay, great. So I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and and your company as well, and then we'll um, start on some specific questions. Sure. I'm Lana Last, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Emma. Um, I'm a queer female founder, and I started this company back in 2019 because I had, like everyone else, most of their life have had debilitating period and pelvic pain. Um, And so being able to manage my pain since I was 10 with my first period to 
now in my 30s was really difficult. I had to take a lot of NSAIDs like Advil and Naproxen to manage that pain. Plus I get ovulation pain and PMS. So I was taking a lot of medicine. Um, but I ended up in this hospital during my master's uh, with really bad stomach ulcers, which were a result from taking so many NSAIDs every month. And then I went back to my GP looking for another solution to manage that pain. And she put me on hormonal birth control. Um, but that gave me TIA or tiny strokes. So I had to come off of that, go back to my GP who then tried to prescribe me opioids. And that just for me was something I wasn't comfortable taking because I have a family history of addiction. So I really had to find something that I could use so that I could have some type of quality of life throughout my cycle. Um, and so I turned to cannabis. And that's kind of where the journey of Emma started. I was lucky enough during my master's to meet my two co-founders. Um, and then last year meet Dr. Wilson King because we have this shared understanding and love for, you know, knowing that cannabis has a lot of um, attributes to help women in pain. Wow, that is quite a journey. Um, and thank you for sharing your story with us. And just for our listeners purposes, um, Dr. Wilson King is part of your team yes. at Emma. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. She is our medical advisor. I um, forgot to say that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. You can only wear so many hats and remember, you know, where you put them. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Uh, in any case, so let's dial back a little bit and talk a little bit about cannabis. So tell us a little bit about what cannabis is in terms of treatment. Um, we're not talking about getting high. We're talking about, you know, therapy. And then I'd like to also um, slide into what specifically we know about cannabis and its effect on any women's health conditions. So I'll let uh, Janester, Dr. Wilson King, uh, take that one right now. Or actually, those two okay. questions. <laughs> That's actually, yes, those are power-packed questions for sure. <laughs> but what is cannabis? Cannabis is a plant. It's of the cannabis species. And it's been used for thousands of years medicinally in all sorts of ways. Uh, you can use the, okay, you'll hear the terms hemp, and you'll hear the terms marijuana, and you'll hear the terms cannabis. They're all in all three. The only difference between cannabis or cannabis with THC or hemp, hemp is primarily CBD and other phytocannabinoids, but there is virtually no or very minimal THC such that there's no impairment. So hemp products, minimal THC, don't even, doesn't even affect a patient. And then cannabis is full uh, the full spectrum of phytocannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, etc. And you have the terpenes and the flavonoids in the hemp products, you just do not have the THC. And I don't want to demonize THC. THC is medicinally effective, very effective. In fact, it doesn't really, it, it, to have, you should have the full complement of phytocannabinoids for, to, to help many conditions. But there are people who just can't handle THC. So there are products without THC and, the, and contain the rest of the uh, cannabinoids and terpenes and parts of the plant that we all know and love. So now to address the second question in terms of uh, women, I have a saying that I, that I use very often, and that is the health of women, and of course those assigned female at birth, uh, the health has multifactorial components, including mood, pain, poor sleep, and or hormonal dysfunction. So the capacity of cannabis, and this is why cannabis is so great, to act as an anti-inflammatory agent, muscle relaxer, mood enhancer, sleep remedy, and pain relief at the same time make it potentially ideal for those facing these types of health conditions. So what that all meant means is cannabis can help a wide variety of symptoms. And women and those assigned female at birth tend to have 
a variety of symptoms with their conditions. That's what makes cannabis so helpful. Does it matter how it's taken? In terms of the the um, of how women how you need the effects, smoking or vaping, you get onset of action quickly. So if you're having acute pain, you don't want to uh, swallow or eat a gummy and then have to wait an hour and a half for effect for the relief to come. You'll smoke it or vape it, inhale it. Edibles, well, topicals rather, and tinctures rather, I should say. Tinctures take about 20 to 45 minutes for onset of duration. Tinctures are put in the mouth and sit in the mouth for you know up to three minutes and then you swallow because you're getting some of it absorbed through the mucous membranes in the mouth. Um, and so you get a little faster onset of action. And then oral, just taking capsules or eating a brownie or a cookie or something like that. Onset of action may be up to two hours, two and a half hours. So it just depends on your need at that time. Despite the fact that it is faster, and I can understand in certain situations why you'd want to, but I'm also, you know, again, want to point out that vaping and smoking still has an effect on your lungs, just like um, smoking tobacco. There was a great paper written by Donald Taskins from UCLA. He looked at compared smokers and, and cannabis and nicotine smokers and found that the a lot of the side effects are the same. You do get the uh, bronchitis, the COPD, things like that from smoking cannabis as you would from smoking cigarettes. The only difference or the biggest difference was that the cannabis users did not have an increased risk of lung cancer. So smoking cannabis seemed hmm. to be more of a protective factor factor when it comes to cannabis smoking. But you get all the other side effects. So, yes, that is so sure. true that smoking and vaping, we don't know how, how safe vaping exactly. is. Because we don't know what those filaments are doing to the cannabis oil that's in there. We don't know if the, the heat, we, we're not testing the temperature of the heat. So we don't know what's happening inside. What Are there some other products that are being made? or is something burning? We don't know all of that. We think vaping is better than smoking, but we really don't know that. So yes, I, I don't necessarily recommend patients smoke or vape cannabis, but in some instances, it's the only thing that works. And for many patients, sure. unfortunately, it's the only way they'll medicate. I just wanted to clarify, because at the beginning of our conversation, you talked about the difference between cannabis and hemp. And if I remember correctly, or I understood it correctly, cannabis has more THC. But I'm assuming that a lot of what is used for pain, and again, this is where I want Lana to, to jump in um, and, and talk a little bit more, is really the CBD part without the THC. And I just wanted to clarify, am I correct in saying that? Well, that's what people can easily buy. You can't b easily buy cannabis that has the full complement of THC. That comes from a specialized store called a dispensary. And, uh, and you have to go through where, like each state has their own medical cannabis sure. program or adult use program or both. And so that involves doing some different things. Like in the state of Florida, if you want to be, get medical cannabis, you can uh, see a physician, be referred for a recommendation then uh, uh, for an order, and then the, uh, the physician puts the order into the health center. The patient has to get an ID card, and then you can go to the, sto uh, to the dispensary and get what you want. Some patients find that Inconvenient, inconvenient and annoying, so they would rather just go get CBD. You can buy CBD or maybe some of the other phytocannabinoids that don't impair you by itself over the counter. That's why it's so widely used, but really the full complement of, of cannabis should be used for pain. So there are, 
there are ways that people don't have to be impaired if they don't want to be, but THC is very medicinally effective. Lana, you've been so patient. Thank you. And yes. talk a little <laughs> bit good. about how did you come to use cannabis or to discover it mm-hmm. and how um, do you use it? So I'm someone who, when I was experimenting with cannabis, did not like being high, but I understood as Dr. Wilson King having the medicinal benefit for when I was uh, having my period pain or experiencing ovulation pain or PMS. But again, I didn't want that like imperative effect from THC. So together, my co-founders and I looked at CBD and CBG. And CBD is the non-impairing cannabinoid um, that allows people to have that great anti-inflammation effect. And same thing with CBG. So when we were building our formulation, we looked at preclinical studies done by, say, Dr. Ethan Rousseau, um, Dr. Mike Armour out of Australia to see what type of research had been done. And what they found was really interesting. So they a, f- a few different people found that Um, In terms of managing endometriosis, we found that um, other clinicians found that the there was this out of balance um, endocannabinoid system in the vagina and reproductive organs and that introducing cannabis into the vagina and the reproductive organs balanced that ECS system, which then reduced the flares that occurred for endometriosis, which was really interesting. And so what we built was a vaginal and rectal suppository using CBD and CBG isolate for period and pelvic pain. We wanted something that was a localized or like right at the source delivery for that type of pain. And so that's what we started with was this great suppository called OV Relief. Dr. Wilson King had talked a little bit about how long the effect started when you took it in a different ways because the vagina and the rectum are mucous membranes, does that mean that you get uh, quick relief or even immediate relief? Our vagina is very similar to the mouth with the same type of membrane. So although it's not not instantaneous, it's not gonna be immediate. We found in our observational trials and with my own experience taking the product multiple times a month, like during my menstruation and not, that it takes around 30 to 45 minutes to work to feel that full benefit. But everyone's body is different, right? And the type of pain that they're experiencing is different. So we've had some people in our observational trials who it worked for after 10 minutes. For myself personally, I hit that average of about 30 to 45 minutes, but it's a great time to be able to lay down and relax with a heating pad to just let your vagina absorb the CBD and CBG and our base to be able to do its job and get through the vaginal epithelium. Remind me, are you FDA approved or cleared? No. So we are considered an FDA cosmetic. Um, So again, that can be the same as uh, this reduces the appearance of wrinkles rather than saying like this will get rid of your wrinkles. It's that type of wordplay. Um, But that's fine because it allows us as a company to, to take into accountability our own scientific rigor. And so that's how we actually stand out from our competitors. If you're a cosmetic, you don't need to do any of the scientific research that you should do, especially for women's health. But we decided to go above and beyond that and do that. And what specifically have you done in terms of research? Has it been a, you know, on a clinical trial or uh, mm-hmm. observational trial? What have you done? Mm-hmm. So we've done in vitro studies. So we looked at ourselves in um, a test tube setting with vaginal epithelium cells in our lab and compared ourselves to our competitors. And so what we found was pretty interesting. We found that one, we preserve the vaginal pH at a 3.8, which is super important for keeping the flora <laughs> normal in your vagina. We found that our competitors actually push that pH to a seven, which is huge because that can cause BV yeast infections and UTIs. BV meaning bacterial vaginosis. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Um, And then we also did our drug release profile. And so we found that we have this really great burst of all of our active ingredients like CBD and CBG. 
that lasted over 50 hours in vitro, whereas our competitors had this tiny burst and then it died out really quickly. We're also water soluble. We're not oil based. So people who use our product don't need to refrigerate it. They can use condoms too without them worrying that they're going to break and get pregnant. Whereas our competitors all use oil and this factors into that. Condoms can break if you use oil, which again is that fear of getting pregnant if that's not something that you want. So we've done that as well as our stability studies. So we know how long we're good for on the shelf. And then we did two observational trials. The first was on primary dysmenorrhea or normal period pain. And then found that there was 80% total relief as well as relief from nausea, migraines, um, and also helping some sleep, which is really important when you're in pain. And then we did a second observational trial looking at endometriosis, which is called secondary dysmenorrhea. Um, in endometriosis, we found that there was an 80% um, relief in the like knocking down three points on the one to 10 scale. So if a one is I have no pain, a 10 is like I'm in the most excruciating pain. If someone in our observational trial was an eight, they ended up using our product and landing at a six, which is massive for endo um, because it's such a difficult disease to manage. Um, and so that's what we've started off doing. Um, and then we're, we're slowly moving to do more science. We're just trying to fundraise for that now. And what about safety? Mm -hmm. So there's only been one ever um, cannabis product to go through the FDA, and it's called Epidilex. And Epidilex is a drug that's given to children who have epilepsy. And so they are given it orally through their mouths around seven grams a day with castor oil, which is massive. That's a huge dose. And so they were very rigorous because it's used for children. They've done three different animal trials, human trials. There's been a lot of science behind that. And so we took a look at that study, that drug, and worked our way backwards in terms of safety. So we only have 50 milligrams of CBD and CBG isolate in our product. That's way less than seven grams taken orally a day. Um, we also looked at preclinical studies done on cannabis and endometriosis and pelvic pain and looked at the dosages there and came up with where we land. So we actually have no side effects whatsoever in any of our products, which is pretty amazing. That's speaking to the cannabis, but what about any of the other inactive ingredients. Is there mm. any risk of sensitivity or irritation or anything like that? No. So the base formulation that we use has gone through the FDA and is approved. So there's nothing there at all for sensitivity or anything like that. Um, it's If anything, our product is better for sensitivity because again, we don't use oil. Everything is water-based. Talk a little bit about what you would use the rectal suppository for versus yeah. the vaginal. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, a lot of people who have bowel endometriosis will use it rectally and vaginally, but because the membrane between the vagina and the rectum is very thin, it really doesn't matter if it's used vaginally or rectally for that. However, people who have colon cancer um, and are undergoing chemo have been buying our products to use it rectally just to manage that really brutal pain as well as IBS and IBD. So that's been really interesting that we're getting different groups of people who have different um, chronic problems and pain using our product. We've also had people undergoing IVF or egg freezing who have had pelvic pain who've been buying our product to manage um, chronic flares like endo or specific types of pelvic pain while undergoing this treatment. This is such an underlooked kind of um, part of the body when managing pain with cannabis that I think we've just been so lucky and grateful to have so many people use our product for different things, but it runs the gamut. For sure. And when Lana said IBD and IBS, IBD is inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's, mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis, IBS is irritable bowel syndrome, two different conditions. We're working with Dr. Wilson King and our team to provide educational webinars 
um, and series for cannabis and women's health. So we really want people to understand, you know, how to read a cannabis label. Like what's the difference between hemp extract versus isolate, right? To have that type of information so you as a woman who's managing a pain can go and feel empowered as a buyer is so important. So we're gonna be coming out with that series as part of our subscription program so that people can feel educated. And what my, I like, my favorite thing is that now gynecologists and clinicians are reaching out to us, asking us like, hey, my patients are asking about cannabis. What can you tell me about that? Patients are the ones who encourage doctors to learn about cannabis. Are you talking about a, a cannabis specialist? And where does one find one? We're getting more physicians involved in cannabis and learning about the endocannabinoid system and helping patients. Now, in the state of Florida, you can find a cannabis clinician by going to the Department of Health website. There's a list of the doctors. You have to take and a certifying a certification exam in order to recommend cannabis in the state of Florida. And you'll see a list of those who uh, have, have passed the exam and are certified to recommend cannabis in the state. They're listed by uh, name and county, and you can find you can find a doctor somewhere sure. near you for sure. And we other no states point, though, about. Are... I was just going to say very briefly that on our website too, my-emmaaima.com, we're going to be uploading a resource with clinicians we know who prescribe or recommend cannabis. And it runs the gamut from gynecologist to integrative specialist to pelvic floor therapists and acupuncturists, because those are people that we work with. And so we know recommend products and understand cannabis education. So we're also going to be uploading that resource for people across the U.S., Talk a little bit about the use of cannabis with perimenopausal symptoms. So using cannabis to address some of the issues. Now, what happens in, in perimenopause and menopause is your hormone levels decline. And uh, progesterone being the first hormone to decline, you lose about 75% of your hormones before age 50, whereas estrogen only falls by 30% by age 50. So you see how your estrogen dominant for a number of years, and that leads to bloating, midsection weight gain, moodiness, irritability, cravings for sweets and chocolates, breast tenderness, headaches, insomnia, anxiety, all of those things, and that's in perimenopause and post, it can happen in postmenopause. Cannabis can, it's a great sleep medicine, so cannabis can help the, to address the sleep issue. Uh, if you don't wanna take hormones or if hormones aren't working for you, Cannabis can address anxiety, can help with the fatigue. You can take some cannabis products that will help uh, stimulate you, help get you going. Our suppositories too, if I can hop in here, Janester, have been used by um, women who are menopausal for painful sex actually, which was really interesting. So we were hmm. just considering like pelvic and period pain. Yeah, and now we have people who are like, hey, not only am I going through menopause and having pelvic pain, but I'm having dyspareunia, painful sex, and have been using the suppositories for that, which is great because we have such a long dissolution time. So we are seeing this adoption for sex, which is really, really interesting. Besides the suppositories, do you have any other products? Yes. Yes. So we are coming out with an oral capsule that has our the exact same formulation as our suppository, except we've also added a new cannabinoid, CBDA, which is showing really great results for managing extreme pain that's associated with cancer. So we're gonna be adding that into our oral capsule, which is coming out this spring. And then Dr. Wilson King and my co-founder, Dr. Mally Maybod, she's our chief scientific officer. They're creating a vaginal suppository um, for menopause specifically, um, just so that we can offer something that's a bit more focused <laughs> for that age group. So we do have more products coming out into the market. How will that one be different than the one for the original one? 
We've done a lot of research over the past two, three years, working with different gynecologists and formulation experts in the menopause world to really come up with a better, more suitable formulation that adds more, say, moisture to the vagina um, so that there's less uh, tearing or thinning of the walls um, in combination with cannabis because we all deserve that personalized health care. So yes, right now you can use our suppository if you're menopausal and have this issue, but um, our next product specifically for menopause is going to be better in addressing these specific issues. And how can people obtain your products? Yeah, so right now you can go onto our website, my-emmaaima.com. Uh, and purchase our product there, or we're on the sexual wellness store, It's Rhythm, as well as a period tracking app called Orchid. Um, We're going into more retailers online, but it's honestly best just to order from us because if you have any questions, I'm the person that answers along with my co-founders. And then just to give a shout out to my (laughs) co-founders as well. Um, They're both really amazing human beings who between the three of us, we suffer from what they call the evil triplets. So period pain, pelvic pain, and IC, or like very extreme bladder pain. Um, and so uh, Melanie Turborg, she's a cellular biologist. She's our COO, and she suffers from IC pretty brutally. And so she uses our product for that. Um, and then Dr. Mally Maybod, who hails from Iran and came to Canada in 2015 and got her PhD in drug discovery and delivery. Um, She has multiple patents under her belt with drug discovery. Um, And she suffers from the same as me, chronic period and pelvic pain. So together, we all know what it's like to like suffer and not have any options. You mentioned the gender pain gap. For our listeners, Mm. explain what that is. Yeah. So The gender pain gap is where women or people who identify as women receive um, less care based on their gender, essentially. So, for example, there was a study done in the UK that looked at men and women who went to the emergency room for the exact same problem, abdominal pain. And what they found was that women had to wait over 60 minutes to see a physician or a doctor, while men only had to wait 45 minutes. Women were given antipsychotics, men were given pain medication. (laughs) So (laughs) that is an example, one example of the gender pain gap, where we're not heard or understood or trusted. What did I not ask you that you thought was important for us to address? You will not die from cannabis. You will not die from cannabis. You can overdose on cannabis, But all you do then is lay down and go to sleep. And when you wake up, you'll feel much better. So it won't kill you like opioids do. That's one thing that's very important to know. Along that line, what about the addiction potential? Very, very low. It's uh, about 9 to 10% of people will become addicted. It's more a psychological addiction rather than physical you could stop, if you use cannabis every day, you could stop using it. You'd be a little irritable for a few days, a few weeks, and that's it. And it's not, like with alcohol addiction and withdrawal, you can actually die from it. Um, and, and you can't die from, from, you don't die from cannabis. If you're just using it maybe topically or pure CBD, is that even a risk? Topically, no, because there's no systemic absorption. Uh, And CBD or the non-impairing phytocannabinoids, you can still overdose on those, but you won't die from them. And by the way, low doses of CBD are not impairing, but you can take a high dose and who knows what that amount is for each individual but high doses of CBD can cause some impairment. I think there's this this balancing act of like, yes, I want us to be successful in business, but I also and want to make an impact on women's lives. But it's really important for us to also do the advocacy work, to really 
to really walk the walk and talk the talk is really important to us. So advocacy for our company is a big thing. We, again, not just want to make like an important product that helps, but we really want to change um, the way that women's health is talked about and researched. I will ask my final question, and that is if you have one or two tips for our listeners in terms of what they can do directly to improve their health. Absolutely. Actually, I love questions like that. Um, the <laughs> first thing I would say is that, number one, you should try to get sleep. You make sleep a priority in your life. It's another area where you may not necessarily think about about it being a part of wellness, but lack of sleep causes weight gain, causes irritability, causes all sorts of problems in your life. And uh, sleep is definitely important. The next thing, the next recommendation I have is embrace healthy eating. I don't mean you have to be a vegan or a vegetarian. Just make healthy eating choices, make better choices, healthier choices, uh, maybe cut down on your fat intake, maybe use less dressing on your salad, maybe uh, eat red meat once a week instead of five nights a week, uh, use other types of proteins to get your protein. Protein is real important, especially for women over 40 but you don't want to necessarily eat all red meat. That's not the healthiest thing to do either. So just make healthy choices. Uh, the third thing is set up, establish an exercise routine. I don't, I don't recommend anybody go to a gym, at least not early on. Um, just maybe go outside and go for a walk. And it's actually been proven that Regular exercise has a lot of benefits. You get a 30% lower risk of depression, dementia, and early death. Just go for a walk in your neighborhood. A 15, walk out your door for 15 minutes, turn around and come back. Make exercise a part of your routine before you start spending money on it. So that's the third, third recommendation. Uh, is is that but fourth the fourth one is self-care we got to learn how to de-stress so we got to learn to take care of ourselves it is important that uh, a chronic stress is actually uh, has a strong link to the six leading causes of death um, heart disease cancer lung ailments accidents and liver cirrhosis and suicide so there needs to be a wellness plan that includes de-stressing, take time to meditate, get a massage, get a facial, do something for you, show kindness and value to yourself, and that, that will help you to help others. And lastly, pay attention to your mental health. Do not hesitate to see a therapist. If you know things trigger you, avoid them. It's okay to say, no, I can't, go, I don't want to do that. It's okay. If they're really your friends, they'll still be your friends. If they aren't your <laughs> friends after that, they never were. <laughs> That's all. Just, um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you address your mental health, however you do that, quiet time, finding something that relaxes you, laughing. Laughing is a huge remedy for a lot of things that, that bother people. It's, it's a great uh, stress reliever. Find a good comedy or find something that makes you laugh. And I'm gonna date myself, but I, it never fails. If I turn on an episode of The Golden Girls, I will laugh. <laughs> I will laugh my Absolutely. head off. Absolutely. And I think they're having a renaissance. So, you know. They, they, are. they are. They seem to be for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, it's really, laughing is, 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 there's nothing better than laughing. And those are my five things that I would recommend. 
talk to each other, educate yourselves and educate each other on the information that's out there. Keep your eyes open and your ears to the ground about women's health because it is important. Even if you're a healthy woman and you don't have any problems, there's most likely a woman in your life who does and who could use anything that you learn or hear about to help them in their journey. This is how women for like millennia have learned about our own bodies is by talking with each other and learning from each other. So we're really big on teaching women and people born with a uterus to understand cannabis. Buy a product or don't, but at least be able to read a label and understand the ingredients so you know what you're putting in your body and that you can feel empowered by that. Um, so please share the knowledge that you have of yourself and other people and brands like us who are doing the hard work to really spread the information, help us spread the information basically. Um, and then of course, self-compassion is a big one. Um, and that's something that as somebody who is a millennial, okay, I have no kids and I don't know how other people do it with kids, but I own a business that's like my baby. And it is a struggle in this day and age to be a woman. It is really hard there. We're supposed to be super women nonstop. And it is an impossibility to do that. So please have some self-compassion and pat yourselves on the back because it is not easy to be where we're at and remind yourselves that this will affect your health. And so it's okay to take a step back and love yourself that way and show yourself some kindness and ease. Beautifully said. And Lana Lass, thank you so much for coming on and also uh, informing us about uh, a really important issue. Dr. Janester Wilson-King, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. It was an honor to be here with you. I love the work that you're doing. Thanks so much. As we close today's episode, we've covered a lot of ground, and I want to thank Dr. Janester Wilson-King and Lana Last for a great conversation. For those of you seeking more information or considering cannabis for health reasons, I hope this episode offers a starting point for your own research and discussion with your healthcare providers. We've added some resources in our podcast notes, so please check them out. Also, I invite you to check out our website at beyondthepapergown.com and subscribe to our newsletter for the latest updates on the podcast, as well as women's health news, activities, events, and more. And before you leave us today, please take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and rate us. It helps us get noticed. As always, thank you for joining me and take good care. Our podcast is produced by Patrick Shambayati and myself, and our associate producer is Kyla McMillian.